Hello Saker Beans and welcome to my channel. Today we are going to be covering Reiki Level 2. So I have already done Reiki Level 1 in a previous video and before you can move on to number 2 you need to watch Reiki number 1 or attend Reiki Level 1 or watch somebody else's Reiki Level 1 just so you have the basics and you have the knowledge and you're familiar with what we're going to be covering today because number two is going to be all about the symbols, distance healing, and level two is going to help you further understand yourself as a multi-dimensional energy being. So in level one, it was more focused on the physical body. So this one is gonna focus more on the energetic body, right, since we are all energy. This will strengthen your intuition, your abilities, and cause a more conscious awareness of your higher self. And then we'll also go over some rules and advice to keep in mind, and then what you can expect from getting an attunement. So the reason I like to do these Reiki videos is that I am a Reiki master and I have been to Reiki one, two, and masters years ago. And I just thought it would be nice to share this information with you guys in case you were interested in taking a course but don't have the money because I paid about $600 for all three levels to learn this knowledge. And I'm sharing everything I have learned to help you save money. And if you're interested in Reiki, just something that you can expect by taking a class. If you're interested in a spirituality and you want to be part of our spiritual community growing together while on our sacred journeys, then please subscribe. Without further ado, let's get started because I am ready for the healing. <laughs> Okay, so before we start, I just want you to keep in mind, like, the positive changes only occur in Reiki with your help. So that just means you must continue working with the energy as much as possible and continue your self-healing as you did in level one. And you need to practice with others. That's how you keep, like, the energy going and you get stronger and more confident with healing others with Reiki. Let's begin with distance healing. That's so mainly the whole point of level two is to heal people from afar. So what is distant healing? Let's go over the basics. It's simply a method to help others with their own personal healing without physically being present with them. As simple as that. So energy is not limited by time or space. Our higher self is fully aware of the lack of limitations. Like energy has no limitations. Your sire, higher self has no limitations. So logic and reason are not required when practicing Reiki from a distance. So it makes no difference if the person is across the room or across the planet. You can still send healing energy. The only thing that holds us back or limits us are our questions of our own intellect. Like how is this possible? And all those negative thoughts. We just need to ignore this cultural conditioning and proceed to be guided by the intuitive abilities of the self. With practice, you will better understand the higher self and achieve not only better healing skills, but a wonderful sense of personal peace and harmony. So when you're performing distance healing, they say you're sending healing to another. And that's like not very accurate because the person receiving it is actually drawing off their own personal life force. So same thing as in person when in level one, the practitioner simply helps the channel of the energy. So it's not you sending your energy to them. You're helping the healee or the person receiving the energy open up their own channel. So from a distance, the healer becomes the bridge between the Healy and the source. So you're just helping connect the bridge. So there are many methods for performing distance healing. So they say the student should first become comfortable with the surrogate method. Um, you can also use another person, a teddy bear, or yourself as a surrogate for healing. Combining the distance healing with self-healing is preferred because anytime you're helping to heal someone, you're also healing yourself. So it's beneficial both ways. So let's get started with the four ways. This is how you're going to perform distant healing. So basically, you want to imagine 
that you are there with the person. So if someone, a client, because you obviously can get paid being a Reiki master and sending healing. So if your client lives in another country or just one state away, you want to imagine that you are with them. Basically, you want to close your eyes and imagine healing and sending this energy to a person. So close your eyes and imagine that they are in the room and you're he sending the healing. And they, a big tip is that you can imagine yourself with like more arms. So you can imagine like four additional arms and every hand and arm is sending healing to speed up the process. So I thought that was a pretty cool tip. The second one is that you can imagine the person you're healing or if you're healing an animal or if you're healing a planet, because you can do that, um, imagine that they were so small that they fit into your hands. So imagine that the person, animal, or the world, the planet, the universe is inside your hands. And that's where you focus the healing energy is to your hands. Like I already feel like the burning sensation, like... So this, we'll get into group healing because that's like a, an easy way to do it. So the third way is to imagine that your knee is the receiving body. So your knee is the person and you just do your regular healing work on your knee as you would that you learned in level one. Focus on the person receiving the healing and then use the left part of your knee for the person's front and the right of your knee for the back of the person's body. Your knee is her head, your thigh is her torso, and your hip are her legs and feet. So you basically start at the knee and you work back to your hip. So it's like you're laying that person on your knee like you would a baby or something. <laughs> this one is also great for healing yourself because you're actually sending the healing through your body, but your intention is to send it to the person you're working on so you're healing both of you. The fourth one, which I thought is super cute, is you can use a teddy bear, a doll, a pillow, or a photo of the person. So you do the healing as normal. For example, the bear, and then after you heal the bear, or we'll use this pillow as an example. So like this could be it's the person's head, their main body, their legs at the bottom, their arms, the front, and then the back. And then when you're done with the healing, you imagine giving this pillow to them as like your healing's complete. Here you go. You want to tell that person or imagine telling them like, take what you can from this bear or from this pillow. So take what healing you need. Another big thing in Reiki level two is group distance healing circles. So this is a wonderful way of sharing distance healing with several others at the same time. So not just you, but your friends can all get together or people online that I've seen before. And then definitely at festivals. Or when I took this class, we were a group of eight to 10 people. When you are a Reiki master in your next level, you can actually, you know, guide these. They're not meditations, but group healing sessions. You can be the person who guides the healing. So basically what you do is you begin in a circle, either sitting or standing, facing each other and holding hands. You ask everyone to take a moment to get themselves calm and centered or grounded, which we talked about in level one, in any way that they're comfortable. So one person recites the dialogue, which is very similar to a guided meditation. So it's like you're guiding the healing process. You're setting the intention for everybody in the group to follow. Um, while you're repeating the dialogue, I'm going to post below what you can read if you want to do this in your own group or what to expect if you were to attend a group healing circle. But when you're reading the dialogue, I will read a little bit of it for you. You want to take your time, put pauses throughout the dialogue and give people and yourself time to enjoy the healing experience. For example, if you are guiding the meditation or group healing, you would basically tell the group, so everybody close your eyes and be aware of the wonderful connection we are making here with, with each other and the universe. Know that we are all safe and we are here to share healing with each other. We know that our crown chakra are open to the universe and that this all loving and all knowing creative source will provide for us whatever we need. 
We gladly accept this universal life force energy as it becomes one with our energy selves. This energy is infinitely wise. It is an infinite potential. And it is an infinite supply. And it just keeps going on and on to like accepting the energy. And then you get to the point where it says, at this time, please visualize someone who may benefit from this wonderful circle of healing energy we have created here. So each person in the group healing circle can think of somebody or think of an animal or which I thought was really magical is you think of planet earth and you have hundreds of people, you know, on the internet at a certain time tuning in and sending healing to the earth or people of the earth. So you can do that too. And then at the end of it, I'm skipping ahead. It says, it has now become time to break the physical presence we have here by letting go of the hands. We know that even without the physical presence, we are still able to connect with this infinitely wise healing energy. <laughs> this life force has no limitations of time or distance. So we can always return to this wonderful healing circle. And they basically close out the dialogue. And in my healing class, I, it was so cool. There was eight to 10 of us, we we're all holding hands. And at the moment that the master was saying this, he repeated like, you will know when it's time to release your hands. And there was like hesitation. And then he repeated it and then everybody let go at the same time. So it was very like connected and universal. It just felt natural, like releasing the hands. So let's move on to some rules and advice to keep in mind. So they say to obtain permission before treating anyone, but, but when it's impossible to receive permission, you may still send the treatment as long as you keep it a very general healing focus. <laughs> the intended recipient is free to accept or refuse this offer of healing. So if you know someone needs some emotional or physical healing, it's saying, and they're like totally against like this spiritual energetic concept. It's okay. You can still send it to them and then leave it up to them to accept it or not, whether they know, you know, you sense it or not. Another rule, never attempt to force healing on anyone. You are not the one to decide what is in the best interest of one another. It can be tempting with people you know, so family and friends. You just want to be like, hey, I learned Reiki, I want to heal you. But if they're not ready for that, don't force it on them. People still have the right to choose whether or not to accept healing. And then you never want to diagnose. This is a big one. So you want to remember to maintain a general healing focus, which we went over in level one. Do not give medical instructions. You're not a doctor, you are a healer. <laughs> And never suggest that anyone discontinue their medications. So if you receive like clairvoyant messages or medical instructions, like because you have really good intuition, you don't want to act on the, the temptation to tell people, you know, the messages you received because you're not there to be a messenger and to channel for them. You're there to channel energy only and the healing energy. Another one is you need to respect your client's confidentiality. This is pretty straightforward, so don't repeat anything you learn during treating them. So if they tell you something, or if you, again, if you receive an intuition a message, you don't want to share that. Um, if you want to talk about like previous clients to like potential clients, you can definitely give examples. Just make sure they don't know who you're talking about. And then lastly, you want to avoid offering advice on personal issues. So you're not a guidance counselor, you're an energetic healer. So most of the time people will get very comfortable with you and want to share their personal life and problems going on. They will open up emotionally to you and it is okay to be a good listener. Definitely listen to everything because most of the time that's all they really want but just try to hold back from sharing any, any advice that could negatively inf influence them or the people involved. So let's move on to symbols and how to use them. So these symbols are wonderful tools to help the Reiki practitioner in level two. So in this one, you should learn their names. So how to say them, uh, their meanings and 
what are they good for, how to use them. Also how to draw them. So there is no specific way to draw them, but there are suggested ways. So practice and develop a method most comfortable to you because eventually that's going to be the right way. When you are using the symbols, you can trace them with your hand as if you were painting them on a canvas or simply visualize them in your mind. You can draw them on the roof of your mouth with your tongue or lightly trace them above the person you're sending healing to. Um, you can also use them in your self-healing, with others in a group healing circle, or for distance. So the symbols are, I'll put them over here. <laughs> the first one, Cho Ku Rei. Cho Ku Rei. So R-E-I is pronounced Rei, like a sunshine Rei or Rei bands. Cho Ku Rei. This is the power symbol or the light switch. So you would focus on this symbol to awaken the power of healing energy. So you, this may help the practitioner to visualize the force healing energy. This symbol is more about the physical healing of the body. So more for level one, Choku Rei. I still use this when I'm sending healing to people who don't know I'm sending it to or to animals. In my mind, I repeat Choku Rei. I don't so much as draw it, but it is a pretty easy symbol, kind of close like the spiral. So you can draw it in the air, on the roof of your tongue, or above the person. The next symbol is called Sei Heiki. So Sei, like S-A-Y, Hei, like Hei, <laughs> and Ki, like opening a door. So you pronounce it Sei Heiki. And this is more focused on emotional and mental healing. This is used to bring healing energy to our emotions and provide clarity to our mind. This helps a practitioner connect the mind and heart with the healing energy. And it may be also used as a protection symbol and or purification symbol. So if someone's going through a loss, a death, a breakup, their emotions are out of whack, this is a symbol you're going to want to use. And drawing it, make it your own. So the outer line, the two little, and like the three with a little dot. So make it your own. It does not have to be perfect when you use this, but visualize it when you're healing someone if they need that emotional healing. The last one, which I think is the most difficult, is Han Sha Ze Shonen. Han Sha Ze Shonen. Han Sha Ze Shonen. So this is for distance healing. So in those group circles, you either want to have people like say this as a mantra, Han Sha Ze Shonen, and draw it out or visualize it. But it's crazy. Let's try. <laughs> hmm. X, three. Done. <laughs> so this is more for distance healing. It helps a student or practitioner to connect to the universal life force energy across time and distance used as a mantra so there's no past no present no future so limitless healing this symbol is used to transmit or send reiki at a distance also used to send across time that is why this symbol is a powerful tool to work on the past time or past life issues tool to unlocking the akashic records and karmic healing so if you need to heal some past childlike trauma or your clients do this is the symbol you're going to want to keep repeating in your head as a mantra. Keep drawing above them. Focus on and focus on healing their past lives or just a past memory from this current life. So the final thing of this class, if you will, is the attunement. So some people say you cannot be attuned or officially a level two Reiki without the attunement, but... So if you want to pay to go to a class to get the attunement, this is what you can expect. So basically an attunement is symbolically similar to a Christianine. With the attunement, the person becomes a better conductor of energy. We are all energy and we emanate energy. But with the attunement, the person is aware of this energy and becomes consciously connected to this all of the time. We realize that nothing happens by chance. And it's best defined as a reminder of something we already know, we've always known, but have forgotten. 
Knowing where power is in ourselves, we have the ability to use our intention to attract better health, restore our physical, mental, and spiritual harmony with the attunement. So during the attunement, all of your chakras regain balance. So basically the Reiki master in the class, like you sit in a chair, he's behind you doing all these symbols on your head, like lightly working with your crown chakra, focusing on unlocking all your chakras, removing all your blocks and reminding you that you're connected to energy. Like you're a more powerful conductor of energy. So it is nice to have somebody else do that for you, but this is just what to expect. The attunement is a simple ceremony where students also help with their intention. So while the practitioner or master is doing that to you, your intention the whole time, you're focusing on accepting the physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual body. You're open to receiving the energy and to becoming a conductor of this beautiful healing source. So that is basically what you can expect from level two in Reiki. In level three, it's the final class. If you want to become a Reiki master or you want to go to the Reiki master class, I will do a video of what to expect. But basically, that class is all about how to teach others. So what I'm doing to you now and you will get your final attunement and we'll talk about how to give that attunement to others. So you get to learn step by step how to give an attunement. And then lastly, you receive your last two symbols of Reiki because there is only five during the healing sessions. So if you liked this video, please let me know below. Let me know if you have been to a Reiki class and if this is similar or if you feel like you're pretty confident to start healing others. I would love to know below. But definitely stay tuned for the next video. I already have it ready for you guys. I just need to record it. Thank you for your endless support. Until the next one.